Welcome to class number seven, se session number three. This session will focus on sensing applications with the help of the carbonan tubes. Single wall carbonan tubes possess good environmental stability, excellent electronic properties, and ultra high surface to volume ratio, as has been explained in the previous sessions of the semi class. These features make the single wall carbonan tubes ideal sensing material for compact, low cost, low power, and portable chemical sensors. The electronic properties of carbonan tubes can change when biomolecules are adsorbed on their surfaces. These changes can be detected in resistor, transistor, or capacitor devices. Thin film transistor single wall carbonan tubes can respond to analyte surface coverage which respond to analyte con concentration. The advantage of these detectors is that the change in conductivity is simple to measure at the time the current optical detectors require lasers which are costly and cumbersome. In this slide, I present an example for DNA sensing using field effect transistor based on network of carbonan tubes. In the presented example, random networks of carbonan tubes, mainly single wall carbonan tubes, with diameters that range between 1 and 3 nanometer and length between 5 and 10 micrometer, are grown on silicon oxide wafers using chemical vapor deposition techniques. The single wall carbonan tube network transistors are fabricated in top contact device geometry. Figure A on the screen shows the schematic illustration of the network devices and figure B show a typical atomic force microscope image demonstrating the density of the single wall carbonan tubes and the catalyst particle on them. The device is immersed in synthetic oleonucleotide buffer for a period of 16 to 24 hours. A standard rinsing was performed in this case to remove the weakly bond DNA molecules. For hybridization experiments, complementary target analyte were pipetted into the immobilized device and allowed to react for more or less one hour. Figure C shows the typical gate voltage dependence of the normalized drain current for the device, immobilized with capture prop DNA and hybridized with complementary target analytes. On the other hand, figure D demonstrates the parallel results for the device hybridized with single base mismatch analytes and in this case, the large reduction in the drain current after immobilization is attributed to the attachment of the DNA molecules on the side walls of the single wall carbonan tubes, thus resulting in electron doping to the single wall carbonan tube semiconducting channels. Electrical sensors based on carbonan tubes can not only be fabricated on solid substrates, but also on flexible substrates. In the presented example, I show flexible chemical sensor made with carbonan tubes that could help detect traces of toxins and explosive in water. This device was proven to perform an aqueous chemical sensor with ability to detect trace concentrations of explosive and chemical warfare agents. The network topology of the sensor is extremely important on the analyte response of the single wall carbonan tube based thin film transistor device. A network of unbundled, primarily semiconducting nanotubes close to the percolation threshold provided good sensitivity and reversibility in the examined case. Also, thin film transistor of carbonan tubes were fabricated with either primarily semiconducting or metallic single wall carbonan tubes, which show responses also 
to TNT and DMMP solutions. The ability to assemble reproducible single wall carbon nanotube films and the simultaneously control of the deposited tube type provides a unique opportunity to investigate the fundamental properties of the single wall carbon nanotube sensors. While more work is required to understand the full mechanistic details for all analog types, the fact that different responses were observed with sorted and unsorted single wall carbon nanotubes is really encouraging. This emphasizes the importance of controlling the nanotube properties within the network of the carbon nanotubes. The covalent or non-covalent immobilization of biologically active molecules on the external surface of the carbon nanotubes has permitted so far to engineer biomolecular complexes and novel conjugates that have been exploited for different applications among the functionalized carbon nanotubes, which are utilized ultimately as biosensors. In the presented image, you can see electrochemical microelectrode containing platinum along with modified single wall carbon nanotubes, which is mainly used as label free detection of the analytes. Electrochemical signals at various concentrations are recording using differential pulse voltagrams, and in this case, an increase in the current is noticed due to the increase in the concentration of the TPSA, and after many trials, it's confirmed that the addition of the TPSA onto the antibody attached to the single wall carbon nanotubes lead to increase in the current. A slight defect occurred in the monolayer due to the compact packaging of the antibody of the single wall carbon nanotube surface that could cause a very high electron transfer rate along the electrolyte and the carbon nanotube. Nevertheless, in this case, this disadvantage would be considered a less effective and can be negligible uh, upon further research and development. Researchers have demonstrated that carbon nanotube cotton threads can be used to detect albumin the key protein of blood with high sensitivity and selectivity. In this method, cotton has been coated with carbon nanotubes and polyelectrolytes. The resulting carbon nanotube cotton cloth show high electrical conductivities as well as some functionality due to biological modification of the intertube tunneling junctions. When the carbon nanotube cotton cloth incorporated anti-albumin, it became like electronic textile biosensor that qualitatively and selectively detect albumin. The same sensing approach can easily be extended to many other proteins and biomolecules. Single-walled and multi-walled carbon nanotubes are dispersed in dilute Nafion ethanol or PSS water solution. A general commodity cotton thread is dipped in this case in the prepared carbon nanotube dispersions and dried. This could be seen in figures A and B on the screen. After several repetitive dips, a layer by layer assembly process is achieved and the cotton thread become conductive with a resistivity as low as 20 ohm over centimeter. As a demonstration of the conductivity, one can easily power a LED device connected to a battery by the prepared threads. This could be illustrated in figure C on the screen. The strength of the carbon nanotube cotton cloth is more than two times higher than the original cotton thread due to the reduction of the overall diameter of the fibers that are inherently 
insert it into the cotton. Even though the cotton becomes slightly harder after being coated with the carbonate tubes, it is still very flexible and soft, both of which are important for wearability of electronic fabric. Single exposure of the produced yarn to different solvents imitating washing don't affect the electrical properties of the complex that has been generated with the help of the carbon tubes. Now, the low electrical resistance of the carbon tube cotton cloth allows for convenient sensing applications which may not require any additional electronics or converters. It also reduces the power necessary for sensing. This method provides a fast, simple, robust, low-cost, and readily scalable process for making electronic textiles in a very cost-effective way. An effective sensing platform has been presented throughout non-covalent assembly of the single wall carbon tubes and dye-labeled single-stranded DNA. Figure A in the presented slide shows the signaling scheme. When the single wall carbon tubes are added to the dye-labeled single stranded DNA solution, the single stranded DNA solution and the carbon tube hybrid structure can be formed in which the dye molecule is in close proximity to the nanotube and as a result this quenched the fluorescence of the dye molecule. The dye labeled single stranded DNA can restore the fluorescence signal to an initial state in the presence of the target. Actually, figure B illustrates no significant variation in the fluorescence intensity of the FAM labeled oleonoglutide, which denoted here by the letter P1, in the absence of the carbon tubes. In the presence of single wall carbon tubes, a dramatic increase of the fluorescence intensity at 528 nanometer can be observed in the DNA concentrations that range between 5 to 6 nanomolar, suggesting that the single wall carbon tubes and DNA assembly approach is effective in biosensing target DNA. In this contribution, a visual sensor for DNA hybridization with DNA probe modified magnetic particle and multi wall carbon tubes is designed without involving a visual recognition element such as fluorescent or chemiluminescent reagents. It is found that DNA probe modified multi wall carbon tube could connect with DNA probe modified magnetic particles together in the presence of perfectly complementary target DNA and form a sandwich structure. The complex could be dispersed in aqueous medium and have strong light scattering signals under the excitation of light beam in the UV V's regime. In a magnetic field, the formed magnetic particles and the multi-wall carbon tube species can easily be removed from the solution resulting in a decrease of light scattering signals. Therefore, a magnetic particle based sandwich sensor could be developed to detect DNA hybridization by measuring the light scattering signal with DNA modified multi-wall carbon tubes as recognition elements. Experiments show that the DNA modified magnetic particles sensors together with the carbon tubes could be reused at least 17 times and indeed it can be stable as much as six months. In the contribution shown on the slide we present a mass sensor that is based on nano electromechanical system or NEMS and consists of single carbon tube that is double-walled to provide 
uniform electrical properties and increased rigidity. A DC voltage source, such as from a battery or a solar cell array, is connected to the electrode in this case. Then, applying a DC bias creates a negative electrical charge on the free tip of the NAND tube. An additional radio frequency wave tickles the nanotube, causing it to vibrate at a characteristic resonance frequency. When an atom or molecule is deposited onto the carbon nanotube, the tube's resonant frequency changes in proportion to the mass of the atom of the molecule, much like the added mass of a diver changes the resistance frequency of a diving board. Measuring this change in frequency reveals the mass of the impinging atoms of the molecule. Getting nanotubes to vibrate is fairly easy, but the difficult part is detecting those small variations. This is accomplished in this case by field emitting or spraying electrons from the tip of the nanotube and detecting the resulting electrical current. Using those NEMS mass sensors, which are presented on the, on the screen, it was possible to weight individual gold atoms and to measure masses as small as two-fifths that of the gold atom at room temperature and just a little bit more than one second of time. A gold atom has a mass of 325 by 10 to the minus 25 kilograms, which means that there are about 3 million, million, million gold atoms in a single kilogram. While there have been other names that function as mass sensors before, most of these previous devices were fashioned from silicon and none had achieved a single atom resolution at room temperature. The carbon nanotube mass sensor of the, the Zettel's group is 1,000 times smaller than the volume of typical NEMS resonator, meaning only about 1 billionth of a meter in the diameter and 200 billionth of the meter in length. Carbon nanotubes are the ideal material for this purpose, and their small size makes them sensitive enough to resolve single atoms even at room temperature. While scientists already have the ability to measure the mass of individual atoms throughout complex techniques known as mass spectrometry, this new carbon nanotube NEMS mass sensor offers some distinct advantages and opens the door to new possibilities as well. We reach now the end of class number seven, session number three. Thank you.